Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Rosh from The Poor Millennial Mom and this channel is all about cash stuffing, budgeting, and debt repayments. So if you are into that, please stay tuned. I am currently in the midst of paying off $86,000 in student loan and credit card debt. So if you are interested in following my journey, please do hit that like button and subscribe to my channel because I would love to have you along. Today, I'm not going to be stuffing any envelopes or anything like that. I'm taking you through my April budgets. Um, this is a rough budget because I will not know some of these numbers until they actually come in. But um, it's always good to have a plan for your money, right? So let's get started. I'm going to start off with my income. So in income in the month of April, I am planning on getting about $400 from work. It will probably be more, but I like to budget down. A lot of my shifts in April are not until the middle of the month, so unless I can pick something up, I probably won't have a paycheck until mid to late April. Child support and uh, daycare reimbursement from my ex-husband is 609. Student loan, I'm paying myself out $2,000 for my student loans. This is going to be the last month that this is on my budget because as of April 30th, I graduate, which is equal parts exciting, terrifying, and just, I don't know. I feel like I still don't know what I'm doing and I'm not prepared. So if you have job tips for new graduates, leave them in the comments below because I would love to have them. I need all the help I can get. Uh, child tax is going to come in on the 20th. That's 477. And then I think also my uh alberta child and family benefit comes in as well so that's 118 dollars and then rollover from savings is going to be 500 dollars. this i may or may not end up using but that gives me a total monthly income for april of four thousand one hundred and four dollars oh by the way if you want a copy of this sheet i will leave it in my um in my description box and you can just Click on it, make a copy for yourself, and feel free to use it. All right, so um, for those of you who are new here, I break my budget down into five categories. Must pay, variable, debt repayment, sinking funds and savings, and the nice to have. Must pay is the four walls. These are the things I need to pay every single month regardless. They need to be paid. They need to be on my budget, and I just can't, I can't forget them. So that's why they're on here. These actual numbers and these uh, plan numbers are exactly the same because I budget these for the worst case scenario and I usually pay them for the worst case scenario. So that being said, let me just go through them real quick. We have rent, groceries, utilities, um, internet, mobile phone, daycare, RESP, and school fees. Rent is paid for money I've been saving in March. Groceries is paid with money that I am saving in March. Utilities, um, half March, half April, because it's due on the 15th. Same with internet. Mobile phone, this is my phone. Same thing. Daycare is due on the 20th. It comes to 468. RESP, uh, for those of you who are not Canadian, the RESP is the Registered Education Savings Plan. So this is college savings for my kids. I think it's similar to a 501k in the States. Uh, the government matches up to a certain amount. So I prioritize putting at least $100 a month or $50 per child into that so that I can get that government match. And then school fees, this is tuition for my daughter because she goes to private school um, and it's $250 a month. I usually either pay it as a lump sum or monthly. They're pretty flexible on that, so I'm pretty happy. And I save for this throughout the month and it's due on the last day of the month. And that brings my total planned expenses to 2138 so as you can see, my planned expenses alone take up half my income, which is something that I want to work on this year, bringing those down. But honestly, with the cost of everything going up, I don't even know if that's possible. So our second category here is variable. I have four variable envelopes. These are the ones that go in my wallet every week that I carry around with me. I also have a kid's envelope that does not get carried around with me and I don't really stuff it anymore. Um, I usually end up paying for kids just out of my bank account, so, um, but we'll see, that might change as time goes on. But anyways, my four envelopes there are food, fun, miscellaneous, and spending. 
They each get $20 a week or $80 total for a total of $320, which leaves me with $1,646. And so we're going to move on to debt repayments. If you have been following my journey here, I have three credit cards that I'm attempting to pay off by November of 2022 because that is when my student loans come due. And so I need to clear those so I can throw as much money at my $75,000 in student loans. So um, according to my snowball, the way I decided is FIDO is priority. It's the one that I, it's the one with, that had the lowest balance. So that's the one I'm trying to pay off first, which I should get to do by the first week of April. Fingers crossed. Tangerine is the second. That's the one that I'll tackle once FIDO is cleared. And then RBC is the last one. It has the highest balance. That's why it's planned. Minimum payment is so high. So we're going to do 50 on FIDO as the minimum, 66 on Tangerine as the minimum, 145 on RBC as the minimum, and then $300 towards the snowball. But ideally, as the month goes on, this amount is going to be higher. And that brings our total to $561, leaving me with just over $1,000 for everything else. Now I'm just going to take a break for some water, and then we'll get back to it. Okay. So our fourth category here is sinking funds and savings. Now, these do change a little bit, um, just simply as my life changes, so do my savings goals. But this is what I have for April. Let me know what you think. Um, because I am adding a couple extras here that I haven't before, and I'll explain as we get to them. So, vacation is going to get... I'm budgeting 50. There'll probably be more in there. I have a couple vacations coming up that I need to save for, so that's why it is a sinking fund. Car is going to get 100. I put in $100 a month or $25 a week. This is to save for a new vehicle. Christmas, 25, potentially more. Christmas is already halfway funded um, for 2022. And so I am deprioritizing Christmas to put more money into some of the other things that I need to prioritize. A 10% challenge is going to get 10% of my income for the month. So this income total here. So this amount is actually wrong. It should be for 10 let me just fix that here. Um, yeah, so this is one way for me to ensure that I am prioritizing savings instead of spending. So by pulling that 10% challenge money out, it means that I actually don't spend the money. And then I can use it for whatever else I need to. There is no actual place that that is allocated yet. Health and dental is getting 150. I am saving up for a dental surgery for one of my children. Um, that's going to cost about $4,000, and I would like to be able to pay for most of that out of pocket. Although I'm not sure if that's going to happen, since the surgery theoretically will be in the summer. And that's just a lot of money to save up for in a few months. TFSA, um, this is my retirement savings. I put in $25 a week, or... $100 a month. This goes into a Wealth Simple account and I buy investments out of that. And if you are interested in how I invest on a low income or just how I invest in general, please leave a comment down below and I'd be happy to make that video. Um, since I can't put that much away, $25 a week is what I've decided is my minimum amount and then I kind of throw more at it if I want to. And then the final category is new, sort of. This is extracurricular slash kids. Um, both of my kids want to take up some activities in September. And so I want to make sure that I have money set aside for those registration fees and uniforms and all of that stuff. I think my daughter wants to do dance and my son wants to do karate. So neither of those are cheap activities. So we're going to start, uh, start saving now. So my total amount for sinking funds and savings is $915 which leaves $170. So actually, I just want to explain something here. You might see over here this total saved and like this negative number. Um, that gets filled in as the month goes, goes on. Um, it's the actual versus the planned amounts. And I'll show you when we get to the bottom how I do that. 
and why I find it important. But anyway, so our fifth category here is nice to have. These are the things that I don't need. Um, I could do without them. My life, it wouldn't, it wouldn't affect my life too much to not have them. But um, I like having them. So that's why they're called the nice to have. This is where I would cut if I, if I was, this is the first place I would cut if money became a massive issue. So let's go through it and I'll explain why. So household, $10 per week goes into my household envelope. Um, this is for anything around my house that we might need, you know, weather stripping or a new rug or whatever. Um, but I've been living on my own for a long time. And to be honest, I don't really need that many things. So this one is a nice to have because I don't necessarily need to prioritize it. Accepted Society is a online group uh, for accountability for academics. Um, it's $60 because it is paid in American dollars. So there's a whole exchange rate thing going on. Um, while this isn't a need, I do find it very helpful. I really love it. And so I wouldn't want to get rid of it if I didn't have to. Um, Instant Ink, $7. I'm a college student. I print things. My kids want coloring sheets. I have to print essays. I print out cash envelopes to try out how they look. You know, like I do a lot of printing. So I pay for 100 pages per month on Instant Ink, and um, I mean, if I had to get rid of it, I could. Disney Plus, $13. Um, I mean, we have Netflix, so I like Disney. It's not a need. Amazon, $5. I actually share my Amazon account with my extended family, so I would probably keep that just because we all use it. And then Spotify, $5 because I have the student plan. So that brings my nice to have to $130 and that leaves $40. So as you saw, when I scrolled down, there's this big red, I'll show you what that means. But my total income minus total expenses, um, income came to 4,104, expenses came to 4,064, that leaves me $40 left. I do not zero based budget because um, it makes me feel insecure. I always, I have this cell set up with, uh, with conditional formatting. So if it's ever a zero or a negative number, it turns a bright red. And that is a notice to me that tells me that I need to adjust some of my categories until it is no longer red. Um, right now it's not, that's good. This is the buffer that's going to sit in my bank account. This is what's going to deal with any unexpected issues it's going to roll over like whatever i need it for that's what it's for but i don't want to completely go down to zero i know there are ways in a zero based budget where you can do that where you have a little bit of a buffer in your bank account but that's really not something i'm comfortable writing into my budget right now so let me know what you think whether you do that or whether you don't um, i know personal finance is so personal so we all have kind of our own things that we want and we prioritize. So I would love to hear from you if you've made it all the way to the end. What are some of the things on your nice to have category? Like what are those things where you don't need them, but they make your life better or you just like having them? We're allowed to like things even when we're on a debt free journey. You know, like we're allowed to have things. Um, that got a little more ranty than I was hoping. But anyways, um, that brings me to the end of this video. Thank you again for watching. Thank you so much for your support. I love chatting with you guys, and I hope that I will see you again soon. Let me know down below what you think of my budget.